I want to do a VDI test on the AT Max, but I want to do it just specifically for gold because that's what I'm most interested in. And so what I got is I got my I got my coil facing me, but I want to be able to swing the object over the coil, and then you to be able to see what the numbers are. Now keep in mind that these numbers aren't going to be exact because whenever you have an item in the ground, it could be on its side, you know, it could be a little deeper, a uh, little bit of mineralization, depending on how you have your thing ground balanced. You just never know exactly. But this will give us a general idea of what the numbers are and what you need to be digging if you really want to find gold. I've dug all the jewelry myself that we're going to use in this. And this right here is my smallest ring I've ever found for gold. You can see it's just a baby. So 4647. What's interesting about that is I think if I remember when I actually dug it, I think it came up a 40. That's a little 10K, just very small ring. Here's just a long piece of foil. So that comes just under it. Here's a little teeny piece of tin or foil or something, but it's more kind of I'll just, it was kind of smashed together, more of a clump. So that's a 44. So we're still not quite there yet. We're still just under that ring. This is, um, you know, one of the closing top pieces of foil. See what it does. Still not quite got there. So we're just under that ring. This one feels more like aluminum or something. Okay, there we go. 47, 48. So this and this were the same signal. Okay, let's do one that's a little harder. There's a little baby earring. You see how you can barely hear that? That came up as a 40. Um, so that's going to be like a, just a teeny piece of foil. I don't even know if I have one. Here's a little bigger earring. This is a 10K. Wow. So that one we jumped clear up to 55. And I think... But the best example of that is going to probably be one of these newer pull tabs. There we go, that was 57. Now, those come in all different sizes. Let's try a nickel. 53. So, those two items came around just about the same as this, this gold earring. <clears throat> All right, let's move up in size just a little bit. Here's a little baby signet ring that I found. 46, 47. So that's still in that foil range. Now this is kind of a pretty one that I found. This is a, it's got a pearl and you can see that it's, it's like wire. And there's a couple of different wires braided together. So 50 to 52, so that would come in just under a nickel, or almost exactly as a nickel in some cases. Here's one I found earlier this year. It's a thin one, but this one's 14K. See, that's right there in the foil range once again. In one of my last videos, I got this one here. But this is white gold. 10k. 
as a class ring. And for some reason, I feel like the white gold comes in just a little less. See how that's 43 on there? Seems like it comes in just a little less than the yellow gold does for some reason in the VDI. Here's another 10K, but it's got these big leafs on it, which can make a little, little difference in the numbers. <clears throat> so as you can see, most of these rings are actually coming up in the foil range. And I watched a video years ago and a guy said, if you want to find more gold, dig more foil. So there's a little baby one. Kind of a solid 45. Here is a 12K bracelet I found. Once again, right there in the foil. Here's a little kind of a mother's pendant. It's got diamonds in it. That was a neat one. 10K. So that one's flirting with 50, but it's not quite there yet. Now keep in mind, a nickel is a 53. So this one here is a mother's ring. That one's got some sapphires and diamonds. That was a nice little ring. Wow, right there in the 40s again. I think maybe you should just only dig foil. That's kind of what this is showing. Well, I'm gonna disprove that here in a second. This one I found in a previous video just recently. I think this is one of the rings in the two ring day. 47. Well, we're about to move up into some of the bigger rings. This is the first ring that I ever found. This is a really neat one. It's pink sapphires with some diamonds. And this is a 10K, but it's but it's white gold. I actually found this in a playground right underneath the swings. See how the white gold came in just a little lower? I mean, that was a bigger ring. And so normally, I think that would have been, like if you found a comparable yellow gold ring, that would have been close to 50, but it came in as a 43. So that's one of the things that I don't probably have quite solved, but depending on what carat your ring is, and then the size will determine what number it is. And there's a huge variable from number to number. Okay, so this one right here, a little bit bigger, kind of a men's ring. Wow, okay, so that one right there came up almost identical to a nickel. That came up solid 52. Now, depending on what angle and condition, you know, your nickel is in the ground, uh, you know, it, it can vary too. So I've, I've dug nickels close to 60 and I've also dug nickels, you know, 50, 51. Seems like sometimes when I dig a V nickel, they'll come up in the forties for some reason. All right. So this is a, a much heavier men's ring. It's thick. This one's 14K. <laughs> See that? Wow, we jumped all the way to the 60s. So, that is going to be very similar to a pull tab. Look at that, we hit it almost exactly. But it kind of depends on how it is because see how this one right here has the little 
beaver tail bend over. See how much that changed the number. Okay, here's the men's cross ring. Love that one. It's cool detail on it. Back in the 60s. So this one right here is it's yellow gold, but it has a white gold strip right down the middle. And if I remember right, I think this one here is a 14K. And I, when I dug it, it came up a solid 53. So let's see what it does here in the air test. Yep, so there you go. So that one right there would be exactly what a nickel is. So here's a little chunkier women's ring I found. Nice stone on it. So that's right there about a nickel as well. So this is a chunky 10K Black Hills Gold. I remember when I dug that, that one came up a 61 for me. It's coming up 62 here in the air test, but it gives you a pretty, pretty decent idea of the differences. So it seems like the smaller gold, like the women's rings are gonna come up mostly as foil. And then as they get bigger, you know, you enter the nickel range and then, you know, into the 60s. And the tricky thing with 60s, of course, sometimes on this machine, the, uh, sorry about that, 65, depending on the condition of a zinc penny, and I find a lot of zinc pennies at 65, a really nice condition zinc penny usually comes up a 75 on this machine. So I'll do one more kind of smaller ring. Solid 50, so that's going to come up just under your nickel. Now here's my trophy ring. Man, I love this ring. Look at that. And this is the biggest ring I have. And also the most valuable. So this is an 18 karat gold ring. Sorry if you can hear my dog in the background. I've got a GSP pup, a little over a year old. And he never leaves my side, so he's in here chewing on his bone. So sorry if that's kind of annoying, but it's just how it is. There he is, his Nia Cutie. And if you can kind of see, the diamonds are actually set in 14 karat white gold. So what I was doing is I was turning the ring and so you saw the different angles, <laughs> gave me all kinds of different readings. Look at that, I, I'm almost up there to a, to a zinc penny on this one. So. Okay, now for the gold coins. I have never found one. So I'll be using gold coins that I've purchased. So this one right here is going to be a really small cougar end. So that came up pretty high. That was over a nickel. Here's a small Indian head gold piece. That's pretty much the same. Here's a 
$5 gold coin. I think my buddy, when we did it, he had a $5 buffalo. <laughs> I think it came up with the exact same as a zinc penny. But here's the one that really surprised me. One ounce. Tell me that doesn't just blow your mind. So... Nobody's going to have a hard time finding a one ounce gold coin. Everybody's going to find that one because they're going to think it's a silver half dollar or something. If you want to find more gold, you're going to have to change how you hunt. I know a lot of you out there, you're just cherry picking silver all day long. And you're willing to pull clad after clad after clad. And that's really not worth that much. So... If you want to get the valuable stuff, you know, <laughs> dig foil, dig pull tabs. Because at the end of the day, when you have a gold ring, you're going to be a lot happier than with the silver coin. And hey, you know, you get a deep silver signal, you can still pluck it. It's not like you're giving up on silver. But, you know, I've heard from a lot of metal detectors. They're like, well, someday I'm going to find that gold ring or someday I'm going to find... That gold coin, it's not going to happen if you don't dig it. Hey, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button.